Hello beautiful, welcome back to my channel and welcome to this video where half of my face is drugstore and half of my face is high-end. Yes, right now. Half of my face is drugstore and half of my face is high-end and I'm gonna be honest with you, they are so similar that it's really hard to tell the difference. Let me know right now down in the comments if you can tell the difference because I'm gonna be honest with you. If I met someone with this makeup and then didn't tell me that they have used widely different products on both sides of the face, I wouldn't be able to spot it. And if you like makeup content, don't forget to subscribe because right now I am uploading every day until Christmas. And I also will say that I normally upload quite often as well if you're interested in getting makeup videos. But yeah, let's get some hair out of the face. One side of my face is high-end makeup. Let me get it a little closer so you can see. One side of my face is high-end makeup. One side of my face is drugstore. What do you think? Yes, different lipstick, different bronzer, different blushes, different highlighters, different foundations, different powder, different concealer, different eyeshadow, all of it. Which is which? The only thing that is the same is the brow products and the lip liner. I think I did a really good job. And before we get into the actual tutorial portion of the video, this one is drugstore and this one is high-end. So this half of my face is drugstore makeup and this half of my face is high-end makeup. Did you guess correctly? Let me know in the comments, no cheating. And yes, if you're thinking, what What do you mean on the thumbnail it was up? Yeah, I'm trying to not make it as easy as I did last time. So yeah, I did invert it a little bit. I did invert my face on the thumbnail. Just trying to throw you off a little bit. Let's not make these videos too easy. I did do a video like this a while ago and I will leave a link to that one down below in case you're interested. And also if you would like to see more videos like this in the future, let me know because I can totally make that happen. But now let's get into how I made this happen and what products I'm using. Welcome to my bare face. Let's start with this makeup. I think I'm going to do drugstore on this side and high end on this side. And I have to mention that these two are basically the same. I, I'm sorry, they are. They, they're basically the same. This is the e.l.f. Power Grip Primer and this is the Milk Hydro Grip Primer. I mean, let's be honest, they did a borderline <laughs> copycat move e.l.f. with this one because it's almost the same name. It has the... Uh, <laughs> it has the same color. It has the same function. They're both called, like, something grip primer. Like, they are tethering on the line of being a copycat not full on but tethering on the line and i'm actually going to be using let me do this with my other hand then so we don't get uh, the same i am actually going to be using a foundation today that both they are so similar and both on the drugstore side and on the high-end side they uh, perform a lot better with the gripping primer. It makes them last longer because they are a little bit more on the dewy side. So I thought it would be a great time to show you that you can get a gripping primer that performs just like the e.l.f. one at the drugstore. I would even say that the e.l.f. one is more tacky than the milk side. So looks like that on. Let me wash my hands and let's go in with foundation. And that is that I think that the Jason Wu Tinted Moisturizer meets CC Cream is very, very similar to the Charlotte Tilbury My Beautiful Skin. I think they are very similar. Are they 100% dupes? I don't know. I don't even know if they're like the same color. Let us do a little bit on this side. And then let us do a little bit on this side. Just so we can see if they're the same or not. I know that Charlotte Tilbury... Yeah, they're very similar in shade. I know that Charlotte Tilbury sometimes have a tendency of leaning a little bit on the yellow side, but you can tell they're very similar in shade and I think they are very similar in consistency as well. So I'm gonna do the drugstore side first. Let me just, I'm having two different sponges. This is the high-end sponge now. <laughs> but I just think that these are Medium coverage, you can build them up. Medium coverage with a very healthy glow. But I think that if I don't wear them with a gripping primer, they do tend to not break up, but slid across my face a little bit. I do have more of a normal slash combo skin, depending on the season. But I think they both look incredibly similar on the face. Okay, let's go in with some Charlotte Tilbury. It might be that the Charlotte Tilbury has a little little bit more coverage straight out of the gate than the Jason Wu one but if I don't use too much I'm sure I'll be able to get a similar result. You don't get to tell me that this doesn't look <laughs> exactly the same. 
I dare you to tell me that this does not look the same. And if you're wondering about any of the shades, I will put that in the description box in case you were wondering because like these are a perfect match towards each other. So if you're the same shade as me, I would say that I am a light medium with a neutral golden undertone. So if you are like me, both of these shades are a really good match for me when I have a little bit of a tan. So I will link everything down below and I will list all the shades that I'm wearing. When it comes to concealers, this is more a consistency and finish and coverage kind of situation than it is a color match. And that is the NYX Bear With Me and the Kosas Something Revealer. I think that these are both very comparable. They are pretty thick in consistency. They can be a medium but can be built up. The difference though is that this one is double the price than this one. This one comes in a few more shades, but also Kosas is known for having very yellow leaning shades. So I think that maybe if you do not have a yellow undertone, you probably have an easier match in the NYX Bear With Me range. This one has a little bit of an awkward component so that it's very easy to overdo it with like getting too much concealer out. This one also contains more product than this one, even though this one is half the price. And also one of the reasons why I would recommend the NYX one over this one is that Kosas is kind of known for having a weird relationship with preservatives, which makes, I have some breakout here, so maybe I can just do a little bit. <laughs> having a weird like relationship with preservatives, which leaves a lot of their things to go bad really soon. Mine has not gone bad. No, mine still smells like a concealer should smell, but like my bronzer that I got from Kosas went bad immediately, like it, it was rancid. And remember the lip liners that I decluttered this year? They were released this year and they got discontinued before the, the official shelf life of the first batch had even gone out because the preservatives just didn't work out in the formula. And I've heard a lot of you say, that your concealer went bad real fast and also that your foundation from Kosas went bad like real fast. Mine didn't, but I want to acknowledge that buying something from Kosas right now seems to be, uh, this is the drugstore one, seems to be a little bit of a Russian roulette moment because you never really know if you're gonna get one that gets bad immediately or not. And you can tell the next one is lighter than the Kosas one. And this is why I said, this isn't necessarily a shade match. So this one just looks brighter than this one, but I'm going to use a light powder on both of them so it evens out. But I think that they cover similarly. Uh, it's just that the next one is way lighter and I also think I got more product on the next side. So I'll try and fix that because it's, it's kind of easy to get too much product with the next one because it's a pump. I mean, what are you gonna do? So I would say like how they feel under the eyes and how they cover. I feel like that is pretty similarly, but I would recommend the NYX one over the Kosas one for several reasons. I am actually gonna be using this powder on both the sides. This is a lighter powder. This is from CoverGirl. I'm gonna be using it with the, oop, the LH Cosmetics a Little Poofy Poof. And I am, I put the powder on here and I just rub it in a little bit. And then I set the concealer. And this is gonna make this area become a little bit more the same <laughs> shade as this area, I'm hoping. Let me do my brows. I'm just gonna do my brows like I normally do because I actually don't have a lot of brow products at hand. And I like doing my brows a little lighter lately. You can tell they're pretty much the same shade now that I've set them down. So I think I did a good job. Go me. I'm just putting a little bit like this because we're gonna go in with the finishing powder as well, but I'll do that after the brows. I'm trying to find two brushes that are fairly similar, but like they're not really, but we're gonna deal with this. I'm gonna make it work. So I wanna talk about uh, bronzers because I wanna compare the Makeup Revolution, which is the cream bronzer. I have it in medium. I think this one is a little bit more, like a little darker and a little bit more pigmented, but this is the Fenty Beauty cream bronzer. And I have this in macchiato. And I think that they have a similar undertone and I feel like they have a similar feel, like the consistency. But I do think that this one is going to appear a little bit more like darker. So I'm going to go in with a light hand. I feel like I'm able to sheer it out pretty good though. I do think that this is a really, really good cream bronzer. And if you are balling on a budget, I definitely would recommend it. This side is the Fenty one and I feel like it has a similar feel to it but I do think that this one is maybe not as deep as the other one. So I'm just gonna build this up a little bit more. 
but overall they both have a little bit more of a cooler undertone so I try to not take it too far out because I feel like that makes me look a little ghoulish so I'm gonna use this a little bit more like I would use a contour but if you were looking for a bronzer that's like not too warm like not pulling orange I would definitely recommend either two of these shades they're more on the neutral, not cool tone, but definitely not orange. But I feel like they look very, very similar on the cheeks. Maybe, like I said, the drugstore side is just a little bit darker, but overall, I don't think that you can tell. This is a dupe that I've been dying to tell you about, and I've had this for a long time and I hadn't gotten around to it. This is the Glossier Cloud Paint in Dawn, and this is the NYX Sweet Cheeks in Almost Famous. They're both matte. They're both like more a cream formula and they both are pretty orange. So I'm gonna do a little bit of the orange one on this side and I'm gonna blend it up with my fingers. They're both very pigmented and like I said, they dry down matte. I prefer a glowy blush. That's why this has never been like one of my favorites, but they are. And on the other side, we're gonna take the uh, cloud paint. This is so um, pigmented and also like this one just has a tube. So I'm just gonna do like this. And this is gonna last you for forever. Let's just put it like that. I do prefer the Glossier uh, formula to the NYX one. I'm gonna be honest. It is a little easier to blend and a little less prone to um, like lift anything but it's also more pigmented which makes it a little harder to work with because like it's so easy to go a little overboard like you can tell it already became much more orange on this side so the next one is not as pigmented it is a little bit more prone to lift this one is easier to work with but it's also so pigmented that it makes it sometimes a little hard to build with and also you can tell that this one has a slightly warmer undertone this one has a slightly cooler more like corally undertone for that reason i do prefer the cloud paint because you can tell it just pulls a little warmer and it looks better on me but overall i think they're i think they're very similar okay so this is a dupe that i honestly don't think is going to be a dupe and this is the flower beauty versus the charlotte tilbury when it comes to highlighters but a lot of people are saying that these are dupes but i don't think they're going to be but we're going to try them on the skin and see and this is the flower beauty spotlight they didn't even try to hide that okay so it's called the spotlight liquid highlighter and then it is the beauty light wands by charlotte tilbury i don't think that i have the lightest shade i have it in gleam and this one is not a dupe for spotlight this is more rose gold so i thought we'd compare it to the pillow talk one yes the original pillow talk this is also a highlighter but it's more like a rose goldy one the reason why i don't think that they're the same is because this one i did swatch it i haven't used this on my face actually so this isn't like this isn't me saying that these are dupes but this is me like testing out if these are actually dupes the way that people say that they are because this one didn't look as glowy in my swatch as i remember the charlotte tilbury being but with that being said once you get it on your face and i also love putting highlighter here on top of my brows once you get it on your face there might be a totally different story because like that does look incredibly stunning but is it as glowy as the charlotte tilbury I don't know about that. So this is the Pillow Talk one. This one I have used. Like, I do love the highlighters by Charlotte Tilbury. I think she does a really good job with her highlighters. So we are going to put this one on. And a little bit on top of the brow. So is it the same glow? Well, they are fairly similar, but in real life, there is a little bit more of a intense glow from that one but it also makes this one look a little bit more natural and i don't think that this sheen is as like highlighty and like almost frosty as this one so maybe this one is a little bit more wearable are they dupes i don't know if they're like dead on dupes they're more like the blushes like they are definitely in the same oh let me get this off my fingers they're definitely in the same ballpark i think that they are similar enough so that if you are just wearing one or the other you wouldn't be able to see a difference but i will say now that i get to compare them to each other they're not dead on dupes they're similar enough i'm gonna use a little bit more of this powder that is matte just around my nose 
because I don't like having sheen there. You can see I'm just putting a lot on. I'm gonna brush it off after a little a bit, but we are gonna be using, this is definitely not a dupe in either formula or color, but the way they look on the skin once you've gotten them on, they're very similar. This is the Dior Backstage Face and Body Powder No Powder. This one is being discontinued, so if this is your favorite, maybe get a backup. But I will also say that if you were looking for something to replace it with, maybe check out the Sephora Collection Micro Smooth. This is a baked one, and this is also a baked one, but this is more of a baked gelée, and you can see that this one presses hard pan really quickly. Did not have that problem with this one. You can see that these are not the same shades. This is more true to my skin tone, and this is a little bit too light for me, but they both have that very silky, sheeny, like, just something about them just gives your skin that beautiful, like, silky, sheeny, satin matte, glowy formula that just brings everything together without making it look matte. So I definitely recommend both of them. I mean, the powder no powder is being discontinued and obviously they're not the same like shade, but yeah, I definitely recommend both of them. And I do think that in the way that they look on the skin, they're similar enough to the point where you can't really spot a difference if you get the same color, of course. These are not the same color. But I just wanted to let you know that I do think that on the face, they give a similar effect, according to me. So I'm just gonna put on some lip liner because I'm gonna put on a lipstick and it's a little bit more of a glowy formula. And I do prefer, I prefer a lip liner with everything except like matte liquid lipsticks. And I'm just gonna be using one that's fairly close to my lips. And then we could do the lip and uh, we'll finish with the eyeshadow. When it comes to lip options, when I use this one, which is the NYX Filler Instinct, this one has a little bit of a, you know how the uh, Makeup by Mario has the, uh, a little bit of a plump to them? Like, not like it's super hurting, because I can't do that. But just a little bit on the tingly side. That is what this one has as well. It says Filler Instinct. It is made to be a little bit of a plumping one, but I don't think it's like hurting your lips, but you can feel it a little bit, just like you can with the plumping ones from Makeup by Mario. This one is in Sugar Pie, and I remember when I was wearing this one that I was thinking, hmm, that's a little similar to something I own. So that is half my lips, and this is the Glowing Lips. Uh, I don't know what these are called, but I will, <laughs> I will link it down below from Charlotte Tilbury very expensive, definitely not bought a Target, in Pillow Talk. They are very similar, very similar. The NYX one is a little bit more pigmented than the Charlotte Tilbury one. The Charlotte Tilbury one is slightly lighter, like I can see it. If I lean towards the mirror, I can see that it's lighter, but honestly, they are so similar. They are so similar. So if you had been eyeing this color in the glowing one, try the NYX Filler Instinct. It's very comfortable on the lips. It is a really nice formula and it's way more affordable than the Charlotte Tilbury one. Okay, I put on some eye primer. Let me actually pull in a swatch comparison of the lip colors in case you wanna see how they look compared in a swatch and not on my lips. Because of course my lips have a little bit of pigment as well. And of course the lip liner, even though it is very similar to my lip color, it does make things a little bit different. And in the swatches, you can see that they're not a dead on dupe, but they're definitely similar enough on the lips, especially since they're not 100% opaque. So the two palettes that I'm gonna be comparing is the Colourpop of Quartz and the Natasha Denona Glam palette. I do feel that these have a very similar aesthetics and I'm not the biggest fan of grays, but regardless of that, today we are going to see if we can get a similar look with both of these palettes. Of course, there are more options in the Natasha Denona one, and of course, this one seems like it's pulling more brown than this one, but I do think that it's because this one has a gray background and this one has a black background. I'm going to be honest, I think that that is the reason, and of course, like, we're not going to find every single shade of this one in the Colourpop one because that's nine pan, like that's a nine pan. But I'm gonna see if I can just use a couple of colors and I even wash some brushes for you. That's how important you are to me. <laughs> 
So I want some brushes so that I can have like similar brushes on both eyes. This one is not stained. This brush is green at the end. Don't worry, it's not stained. So that we can just do a very simple eye look and see if you were lusting over the glam palette, can you get a similar effect with the Of Course palette? So I feel after just looking at these, I think that this one that's called Crease. Oh, how inventive. And then this one that's called In The Zone. I think that these two are gonna be fairly similar. So I'm just gonna like speed through and just add those in the crease of both looks. This one is a little bit harder pressed, I noticed. But oh, I'm able to pick it up. I am able to pick it up. So let's go in on the other side. This one picks up a lot easier than the Colourpop one. And it seems way more pigmented. Okay, I am really gonna have to shear this one out. I mean, I'm not surprised that the Natasha Denona is more pigmented. For me, Natasha Denona uh, mattes are some of my favorite mattes. I feel they are pigmented. I feel they are blendable. And I also feel like they have something that I really like in mattes. And that is that they build on themselves. So that you can go in with layer two and make the color even deeper without actually adding a darker color. But I do feel like they look similar. I'm just having to shear this out a little bit. I'm gonna use this exact same color under my eyes as well on the both the sides. So this is the same color that's in the crease. Now I'm gonna try a deeper color and I'm gonna go with um, Smoke, which is this one. And I'm gonna go with this one up in the corner here. I think that's gonna be, oh, come on guy, can you see? I think that's gonna be somewhat similar and then I'll end with the super dark, uh, this one that's called Lash Line and of course the one in the middle here that's called Opaque. I hope that that makes sense. So I'm gonna use three different mattes um, and then we're gonna put a shimmer on uh, uh, the lid. You can tell they're not exactly the same. This one, even though I told you that this one looked more gray in the pan, on the eyes, this one looks more brown than the one from uh, Natasha Denona. But we are gonna put some of the slightly darker ones on. I don't like grays on me because I don't feel like they blend in good with my skin tone and I just feel like they accentuate that my lid is uneven and I don't love it. Now we're taking the darker color on this side. This one is way more pigmented and easy to pick up than the first shadow was which makes me think that maybe that shadow had the same fate as some other Colourpop shadows has, has, has had <laughs> for me lately, which is that they are just a little hard pressed in the pan. I think I have two of the exact same brush. Yeah, these are from BK Beauty, exact same brush. And I'm gonna use the darker color on both side, sides, plural, and just create a little bit of smokiness out here before we do a lid shade. Just a little bit, nothing too intense, not taking over the entire, I say now. <coughs> Watch me turn this into a black smoky eye. But just something to make this a little dramatic, a little sexy. I think I'm gonna pull in some of that under here as well, just to deepen up the outer corner on both the upper and the lower side. That is something that I think really brings the drama and the like the sexiness of a look so i'm just using a little bit of that out there and just trying to make it look believable ish so now let's do the other side and this is the shade lash line which is also the darkest matte color in this palette hmm i do think that this one is more of a almost dark gray, and this one is more of a gray, black, brown. This one has more brown in it than this one. This one is more cool tone, and the one on the Natasha Denona side leans a little bit more on the neutral side, which I actually prefer. I prefer that over a gray, but that's me, personally. I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't think that any of these are like dead on dupes, but I'm gonna be using this one that for some reason is called brow bone. I would not use that on my brow bone, but uh, that could be my skin tone talking. And then I'm gonna use this one that's called transform. I think those are the two that are the closest 
even though I don't think they're like dupes, but I don't know. It is what it, maybe I can get the same feel as well. I'm gonna spray both of them to give them the best chance. I will say that I much prefer the Natasha Denona shimmers over the Colourpop ones. Colourpop sometimes really gets it right and gets like really, really good shimmers that are like, wow, these are incredible. Where did you get these? Like, which bin did you fish these up from? Uh, I don't know if these are that, even though I thought when I swatched them, they swatched perfectly fine. But yeah, I'm just doing a light layer on the lid, just blending it out a little bit, making it look a little believable. And then on a clean brush, I'm taking that other one, um, and we're gonna see... I mean, on the lids, they're fairly similar. I don't know if you can see that the Natasha Denona one is holding together a little bit more. It is a little bit more metallic, just a little bit more sheeny, but overall... I think they're doing a fairly similar job. This one is a little little warmer, just a little bit. I think what I'm gonna do actually with both of these is that I'm gonna do the shadow that's here, which is the very light one, and I'm gonna do that in my inner corners on both of them. I like a matte inner corner, and I'm actually gonna be filming another video after this. We're gonna see if people clock me that I have two different looks on and let me put on some half lashes as well i mean i don't have any lashes that are dupes i'm gonna be honest with you and i can like brush my hair and we can see how this looks when i like get back from the camera a bit like a little bit from a distance because i can tell you right now that in real life these are very very similar <laughs> Okay, so I can tell you right now, there is not a lot of difference between these two looks. And I honestly think the biggest difference is the highlighter on this side compared to the highlighter on this side. That, I think, is the one that gives it away. But other than that, the lip color, the eyeshadow, it's so similar. The foundation, the concealer, the under eyes, the blush. I, I really think that we were able to find some really good dupes. And here's the thing with dupes. Sometimes I think that like, oh, a dupe should be something that's like exactly the same texture, exactly the same formula, exactly the same finish on the skin. But at the end of the day, isn't the most important thing that it looks the same on the face? Like, isn't that the whole reason why we buy makeup. I also feel that sometimes when people are swatching shadows towards each other and they're like, they're not dead on dupes, okay, but like if you put them on the eyes, can you tell, can you spot a difference between them? I think that sometimes we get away from like, it's not important how they swatch, it's important how they look on the face, how they wear on the face, how they behave on the face. And I will say, I think these are pretty spot on. Let me know what you think and let me know if you have discovered some really good drugstore dupes as well. If you would like me to do more videos like this in the future, please let me know. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave and I will see you again tomorrow for a new video. Bye!